Today's lesson, we are going to focus on one of the greatest stories of our the American history. It's one of that I absolutely love telling, and so it's how the United States Constitution was started. So, we uh, first we have to recap just a minute. Uh, hopefully, you can remember that, remember this that we had um, all of these as complaints against the the British monarchy, and uh, overwhelmingly that the, the national government was way too strong. Um, that resulted in the colonists going from one extreme of a type of government, from uh, a pendulum, if you will, to a completely other side, that they made a really, really weak government. Um, and the national government was too weak. They, they did have only one success. Um, things like they couldn't declare, or they, they could declare war, but they didn't have a military. They didn't have any money. Um, so lots of issues with that. And then they, we had the event of Shays Rebellion that said it was too weak. Um, and so once we realize that it's too weak, so on this side, if, uh, if you were to review and you were to write out all the failures of the Articles of Confederation, which are over here, so that would be an easy recap for you. And then how would you fix this if you were here? That would be um, something for you to think about and kind of analyze. How would you try to fix each one of these? Would you try to amend, which means to change? Or would you just say, hey, we need to start over? Um, the, the founding fathers ended up deciding that they needed to start over once they got there. So we have to now introduce the Constitutional Convention. Um, so first and foremost, this was a, a meeting that began May 25th, 1787, and they were in Philadelphia. Now they picked uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania because it was in the middle between the northern and the southern uh, colonies. It was also where a large uh, amount of the founding fathers could get to quite easily. Um, and their number one goal was to amend the Articles of Confederation. Now I need you to make a note of what that means, amend Oops. Amend means to change. Um, so they, their original intention was to change the Articles of Confederation. Now, who went to this? First of all, every, con or every state except for Rhode Island sent somebody. They sent delegates, so these are representatives. There were no women, there were no African Americans, and no Native Americans were there. So these were 55 old white guys that attended this. And now we do need to make note of several important ones. Benjamin Franklin was our oldest member there. Now Benjamin Franklin was quite wise and well respected and, and they uh, everybody really wanted him there. Although he did have a problem uh, with uh, maintaining sobriety and making sure that he did not talk too much while uh, drinking. Um, then we had George Washington. By having George Washington there, it promoted a sense of that this is a legitimate meeting. Um, and so he was considered a, a very prominent person in the states. Um, you had James Madison, uh, who is nicknamed the father of the Constitution because he is the only one who took notes. Now, James Madison was rather on the shorter side of our future presidents. Um, he was only 5'4". However, his, his wife more than made up for that because she had an overwhelming personality you could learn about in American history next year. Uh, and then we had Alexander Hamilton, um, also a very dignified man who he rose up from nothing and he became very wealthy and later ended up really putting a lot of money into the country. Now, out of these four characters, notice I did not say Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson was not there. So if you were asked, it was uh, name, to name a founding father. It would not be Thomas Jefferson. He was in France at the time. All right, so their first major decision is they decide that George Washington is going to preside over the Constitutional Convention. Um, note of how preside, that means he's going to sit over and kind of be the guy with gavel. Um, they decide that each state will get one vote and that they're going to have a simple majority. And that means they have to have, out of 12 states there, they had to have seven vote yes for something. They also decide that all the discussions are going to be held secret. And the reason why they did so was because uh, they were going to make sure that nobody was going to try to influence the founding fathers to react a certain way. 
The biggest decision they end up deciding pretty quickly is that the Articles of Confederation are out. They are, they're going to get rid of them, which would almost be treason because they're overthrowing their current government. Um, so when you consider like our George Washington and, and Benjamin Franklin, were they people who committed treason? That does seem a little crazy, but they did toss out the old government and decide to make a new one. So, things that they must determine. They have to decide how many branches of government are we going to have? And if we're going to have, if we follow Montesquieu's plan, which is that we should have three branches, who will lead us? A king? They knew they needed to have a leader, but they were really torn over what they should have. And then, how do we pick this leader? Is it going to be someone who's going to like pay for it? Or are we going to have people who elect them? Does everybody get to vote or just a couple people? And then, who controls commerce? Now, if you don't know what commerce means, you need to make a note that commerce means trade. And then, will states have the rights to decide things? Or will the federal government have the right to decide things? Um, you know, you had a lot of people who uh, were kind of like either one side or the other, which means in order to get a decision and, you know, to have seven states um, make a decision, uh, an, ag an agreement on anything, means that they had to have a compromise. You do need to know what compromise means, and so both, that means that both sides are going to give up something in order to get something. Um, so, that brings us back to the pendulum, that we have to decide what would be our happy medium. That on one side which we had a tyrant and they had too much power versus they didn't have enough power. This happy medium is going to be called federalism. And federalism is when the, the federal government and the state government are going to share power. And that's it for today.